Ann Marie from Brambleberry.com and today on set I have a very special guest joining us. This is Flower from Big Dipper Waxworks and Flower is a beeswax candle expert. In fact, she's been making beeswax candles for over 20 years and doing aromatherapy for quite some time as well. You have your own skincare line, right? Yep, That's Life by Ritual. That's awesome. So today we're going to be making aromatherapy beeswax candles. I'm super excited to be here to show you how to make them at home. It's going to be a fun collaboration. Yeah. You ready to get started? I am, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what we're doing today. What are we making? What are the ingredients? All the things. I'm so excited. So we're using 100% beeswax. It's got this beautiful yellow color and you just smelled it. So it already has like this amazing honey smell to start so with. Good. And we're going to add essential oils. So Essential oils are like super concentrated plant power, and when you add it to beeswax, it just makes complete magic. So I love making beeswax candles. I'm so looking forward to showing you how to um, combine these scents together. We're gonna do a couple really special scents because I heard that you like patchouli. Yes, I love patchouli. So we're gonna make one patchouli scented candle and one kind of holiday themed candle today. Awesome. Yeah. So I see we have containers in front of us. Tell me a little bit more about some of the considerations that we need to take into account when we're making beeswax candles. Well, I love using containers because they're so easy and you can find them anywhere. These are from brambleberry.com. <laughs> they're super cute because they're hexagons, so bees. Um, but what you really want to take into consideration is um, are they heat safe and making sure that they're not too big or too small. So if they're too small, they might burn extra hot. If they're too big, it's really hard to find a wick to consume all of that fuel. So those are just a few things to look for. These are a perfect jar awesome. for making candles. So is there anything we need to avoid when choosing our containers? Yeah, definitely. So as I said, a very wide diameter or a very narrow diameter, those are things to avoid. Also plastic, right. you don't wanna burn plastic. I wouldn't do anything that's like, a goblet shape that might tip over. So definitely sure. like safety first. Um, other than that, I think that kind of the sky's the limit. So before we get started with the whole candle making process, let's talk about one last thing, which is the wick. That's really important, especially for beeswax candles, right? Yes, it's like one of the most important things. We have a flat braid wick here. Um, basically, this is a bunch of fibers. These are cotton and they're woven together in a braid. The more fibers that you have in this, the wider the diameter that it's going to burn. Sure. And so we have, and we've been testing this wick, and you'll see we have this jar here, and this is a perfect burning candle right here. There's a little bit of wax, but as it burns down, it should catch all of that wax, so it will consume all of our precious fuel, um, and hopefully not burn too hot. So if this whole entire candle were molten wax, I would say that might be a little too hot okay. and have the potential to burn a, a table or something. Sure. So it's really important to test a couple wicks here and there um, just to know. And I would always err on the other side of maybe having a slightly small wick too rather small. than too big of a wick. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. It's very much the marrying of art and science when choosing the wick. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and speaking of burning a little too hot, obviously because of our collaboration, I, you know, we did a lot of prep here and this one, what do you think about this one? Well, so it's a little blackened around the rim uh -huh. and that is a good signal to me that it probably burned a little hot. Um, there is a little bit of wax left over at the bottom, which is an okay sign, but I'm going to say that this definitely looks like it was burning a little more on the hot side. So too big of a diameter wick yes. for the container and the fuel source. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, and so we decided after lots of testing, the perfect wick for this project was the HTP 93 from Brambleberry, right? Exactly. However, and this is the funny thing, uh -huh. beeswax is a natural wax, so it can change from lot to lot. Sure. And so it is really important over the course of time to just continue to burn your candles, assess them, decide whether you want to go up or down a wick. Absolutely, and since we're making candles because we love them, that should be easy. Yes. So let's go ahead and get started on our candle project. Awesome. The first thing is to melt the wax, and mm -hmm. let's talk about safety considerations when melting beeswax. Okay, awesome. 
We're going to use a double boiler system today. I just prefer it um, rather than going like direct onto flame or a heat source, you're going to be able to kind of monitor the wax. It will melt down a little bit slower and therefore hopefully not overheat. Well, and this has such a high melt point that microwave is also not great. I mean, I've personally had like glass containers like this explode in the microwave trying to melt beeswax back in the day, like yes. 20 years ago. Yeah, you can do it in really short bursts, but I really don't recommend right. it, especially for double such boiler. a large amount of wax. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna double boiler it. Yep. And so a double boiler system can be a lot of different things. You can pre, you can buy the ones that are like double boiler in the store, or we yep. actually have one that we kind of just made here, right? Yep, uh, this is just a regular pot from the store. And then I actually brought a candle pitcher from our factory, but there's so many different things. You could just put a smaller pot in here. You could put a bowl over the top as well. There's a bunch of different things that you could probably find around your house that you can use to make candles. Great. <laughs> so now that we have our double boiler set up, all we need to do is add our beeswax to our double boilers, right? Yep. All right. And so yep. I've got a pound, you've got a pound? Yep. And now tell me, how closely do we need to watch this? Like, does beeswax burn? I wouldn't walk away from it, um, but you don't have to like sit and stare at it and monitor it either. Do we have to stir it during the melt point? You can, it's not necessary. Um, it will burn, but it would take a lot to burn. My biggest concern would be for water to get into the pot. So I think with both of our scenarios, that's probably not going to happen. But if your water were to boil and get into the pot, into the pot, then water and wax just don't mix. No. It would most likely just come to the bottom of it, but so. it's not a great scenario. Okay, so let's yeah. hang out here, and yeah. you're gonna do. We're gonna do some essential oil blends. We're gonna mix some essential oils. I'm so excited. Let's do this thing. Yeah. So you developed some special blends just for the Brambleberry collaboration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're so welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about the blends you've developed? Yeah, well, so I heard that you loved patchouli, so sure. I thought, well, I'll make you a patchouli blend. Thank you. Um, I mixed it with some orange and lavender and ylang ylang. So I really love lavender in a blend. It helps just kind of ground. Um, it's really a relaxing oil, but also it can give just a hint of floral. And so I thought with something that's as earthy as patchouli, a little bit of floral might be really nice. Yeah. Um, the orange will help sweeten it up and so will the ylang ylang. This sounds kind of like it'd be really good for spring too. It's great, yeah. 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 Mm. It's really Love great it. for any time. And what are you making for yourself? And then for myself, it's kind of, a, well, we're calling it Joyful Holiday. Because it's got all of the holiday stuff in it. It's got a little bit of orange and clove, so very traditional. But also some fir needle and some cedar to kind of bring in a wood aspect. That sounds like a really sophisticated holiday scent. I yeah. can't wait to yeah. see what it smells like. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and start blending. And we've both got scales in front of us, which yes. is so important, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, we want to be able to recreate these, mm -hmm. and weight is the most accurate way to do that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And essential oils are really, really precious, so I always use a smaller container as I weigh things out. Just in case I overpour something, I can pour it back in and not contaminate. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I'm pouring my Lavender 4042, which I love the Lavender 4042 because it's so stable yes. in bath and body care, but in this case also in candles. And it smells really amazing and just like lavender. Mm, very fresh. And then moving on to my favorite one, I'm going with the patchouli. What All are you right. doing? I've got some orange here. Nice. I love I the dark it. brown color yeah. for this patchouli. It just, and it, I feel like patchouli also is one of those ones that gets better with age. Definitely. Definitely. And it's a good base next? note too. I've got clove that I'm adding. Oh, you're not doing very much of that or are you doing a lot? You know, clove goes a long way mm -hmm. really with everything. So I don't use a ton of clove in any of my blends. It's yeah. just kind of at the base, adding a bunch of warmth. I've got the Lang Lang, same thing. I didn't use very much in this one. Yeah. You didn't design it with very much because it also goes a long way. It really does, and it really sweetens things up. So if you're looking for the, just that like extra little sweetness in a scent, I always add a little bit of ylang ylang. It tends to help out. It adds a little sophistication, sensuality. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And which one do you have now? I've got the fur, mm. so I'm going in with the woods now. And now I'm pouring my orange, which I always mm. find orange to be so liquidy that it's more difficult for me to pour than all the other ones. Yeah, it, like, look at the color of that, though. I know, right? Because it comes from the orange peel. Yeah, it's expressed so they from actually, the orange peel. They actually press it out of the orange peel. Oh, it smells so good. So when you're creating these blends, like how long are you letting them sit and blend before you're like, this is the perfect blend? You know, not that long. <laughs> I will tell you, I add a little bit, and then I'll add a little bit more. 
and then I'll add something else and I'll, and I'll sit with it. And I, I use toothpicks, so I'll just put like a toothpick in it and smell it. And sometimes I'll take a toothpick in another essential oil yes. and start doing this. That makes a lot of so sense. So that I can kind of get a sense of whether I want to add something else to it or not. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, and this is the thing that I love about blending essential oils is it's really personal preference. So it's absolutely up to you and like the sky's the limit. You can be so creative with it. So creative. Yeah adding my cedar. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and then check also where our wax is. It's been melting for a little bit. I'm curious to see if it's done. Okay, so our wax is melted and mm -hmm. ideal temperatures we're looking for? So we're looking for about 155 to 160 degrees. Okay, and you have the temperature gun, I think. Yeah. I, I just got 180 off of mine. Ooh. So a and so hot. it's really hot. Yeah. Okay. And so that's too hot to add our essential oils, too hot to pour yes. all the things. Yeah, I'm 166. Yeah. So while we're doing that, do we need to do anything to prep our jars? It's the perfect time to prep your jars. You don't have to. You can absolutely, after you pour the wax into it, go through and put your wicks in it. However, we're going to be pouring at such a low temperature that sometimes it starts to heal over. So right now is an okay. ideal time to, and I like to use a little glue dot. Oh, it okay. prevents the wick from sliding down to the corner of the um, the jar, especially if it has like a little rounded surface on the bottom. Okay. So I'll just go through and I'll put a little glue dot on the bottom and you can trim your wick before you put it in or you can trim it afterwards and I'll just go through and snip them to the correct size. Okay. And then that way, the bottom of your wick is already centered and you're locked and loaded to go. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I noticed we're cutting these kind of sort of level to the jar. Is there like a perfect amount that should be sticking out before we start to burn it? Like I'm a big fan of a quarter of an inch, okay. but I'd say a quarter of an inch to a half inch is perfectly acceptable. You can also trim these afterwards to be mm. a little bit shorter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So generally I do everything by sight. And so in the event that you don't have a thermometer, I'll actually look at my container and if it starts to adhere to the sides of the wall, that's a pretty good indication that it's starting to cool down quite a bit. So you can see my container definitely is still really, really hot. Mm -hmm. It could be the difference between our two containers here. Um, you might want to pour yours into the smaller container, but I would add your essential oils first. So to the big batch? Mm -hmm. Do I add the whole thing? Yep. All right. So we're using between one and a half ounces to two ounces per pound of wax today. Of, for, of essential oil. Yep. One and a half ounces. That's a lot. It is a lot. Okay. And I noticed it kind of clumped up when I put it in there. That's because it was cooling down the beeswax. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So and I'm just stirring, stirring it. And how long do I want to stir to make sure it's fully incorporated? Um, I would keep stirring it until it's fully incorporated. So because you're getting quite a bit of wax on the sides of your pot, mm -hmm. this is when you could either um, put it back into your pot of water, okay. or you can use like a creme brulee torch oh, and just like sure. softly, gently start to torch around the edges. Okay, so I will do that. And it's like this fine um, play between not wanting to overheat it, but also, um, you know, and allowing it to cool down. Okay, sure. Great. And I'll add my essential oils as well. Okay, so you might want to pour some of your wax into your smaller container. It will start to cool down a little bit quicker that I way. See that. Well, and I'm at 155-ish now. Okay, so pour it into your smaller container so it's easier for you. Okay. Awesome. And you see how it's kind of starting to heal over on the surface? That's an awesome temperature to pour at. Okay. So what so once you have that in there. Okay. You can take the creme brulee torch and just slightly torch it. So you really filled your container here. It might be a little bit more challenging. Oh, good. And there's, yeah. Great. All right, so you've got your surface all cleared up. You might want to move your jars a little bit closer to you. And so usually I will tell you, I would keep the jar on the container. Or, or on, on the, the table. table, yeah. And perfect. How far do I want to fill up? I would go a little bit further. Okay. And so just so you know, beeswax doesn't adhere to itself. So you're going to have a visual line around this because you poured, you stopped, and oh. then you poured again. With beeswax, you really want to do a smooth, continuous pour to get the best looking can. That is such a great tip. Yep. I'm so, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Right, because I'm seeing right little, there. I'm seeing the little lines kind of yep. pools up the side. Yep, and then you want to straighten your wick. 
Okay. And then move, move it on. over. Yep. Okay. And I think I'm going to have a little bit extra, or am I not? So it's always good to have extra containers prepped. Um, one thing that you can do is if you find that you have extra wax, you could put it into like a yogurt container or something that you have around your kitchen. Um, and in fact, if you were to put it into like a, a cup that is tapered, you should be able to just pop it out at a later point. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing that like these jars come in at the top so you wouldn't be able to get the wax chunk out. Right, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And so now I have a lot of wax still here. And so that's where you could either put that back into, you could just put your Pyrex cup straight into your pot of hot water mm -hmm. and get that all to melt down and pour your last candle. Okay. Um, or you could torch it with your creme brulee torch. Mm. Well, I have to say the creme brulee torch seems faster and also a little bit more fun. It so is I'm gonna fun. try that situation. Now this doesn't hurt. This doesn't hurt the beeswax, and it doesn't hurt the essential oil. Nope. Some of the essential oil will burn off the more that you heat it. So you wouldn't want to overheat it. Um, mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to just set it on the stove for a long time. Um, but I think a little bit of gentle heating is perfectly fine. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see, and I do see the difference in color between our waxes. Yeah, Yours is so creamy, and mine's, mine's definitely got a darker, almost gray yep. tone to it. Yeah, it should probably dye pretty dark brown. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll look dark brown. And now, do these have to cure as soon as they're hard? Can I burn them? Like As soon as they're hard, you can absolutely burn them. If they're still warm, they'll pool up a lot quicker. Uh, um, okay, sure. But it, once they're completely cool, yeah, go ahead and burn them. Over time, the scent might change, mm -hmm. um, and so, I find, especially with, I call it plant power of essential oils, they start to kind of synergize and really, really come together and meld together. So in a couple of days, it might smell a little bit different than it does today. Oh, wow. Well, it smells yeah. amazing awesome. right now. Cool. So obviously, I've made beeswax candles in the past, obviously, and I've, ha I've always experienced little tiny kind of inconsistencies with them. So like even right now, I'm seeing little sinkholes are happening. Like what's up with that? Yeah, beeswax is really tricky to work with. There could be a few variables with the sinkholes that we're both experiencing. Mostly, I always point towards temperature first. So okay. it could be the temperature of these containers. It could be the temperature of this oh, room. They were or, cold. Yeah, mm -hmm. or it could be the temperature of the wax. So those all play into it. The other thing is, is I find with containers that um, basically change direction. So this goes up to here and then it moves in and we both poured up above this line. Oh. That tends to create this little sinkhole. That makes a lot so, of sense. Science, I'm sure there's a reason. Mm -hmm. But how do we how do we solve it? What are we doing? <laughs> so how for me, I will either just gently heat the top of this. Oh, okay. And take it back to that it point, even. and it should get nice and even. Or if I have a little bit of wax, and I know I told you not to double pour, but you can double pour and kind of top just, it off. Okay. Especially if it's just at the top of the candle. As I explained earlier, when you're pouring and you stop halfway, and then you start pouring again, that's when you'll get like a very like large oh, yeah. division got, in, in the middle of the candle. Sure. So otherwise, I have like a little hole here. I can just kind of top this off. Put a little bit more wax in there. Fill up that hole. And then? And then I can go through once that kind of heals over and just hit it with that and it'll look perfect. Ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Any other tips in terms I of? I think really um, a lot of it is just watching your temperature, trying to pour as low of a temperature as you can, which is hard when you don't have big, like fancy equipment. It's a lot about patience, but it's also just about process and having fun. Um, especially when creating your own scents, and it's just a fun process. It, especially this is super fun. Yeah. And how yeah. long do the candles last? Any shelf life? I mean, indefinite until they quit smelling? It's pretty indefinite. Some oils, some essential oils in particular, like your citrus oils, like a lime oil, might go rancid over time. Oh. Um, okay. But it's a candle. It's meant to be burned. Yeah. So burn it like soonish. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on set with us. I really hope we get to collaborate with you in the future. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. Awesome. You guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the Brambleberry channel, please subscribe. So every single time we come out with a new video, you get notified. Until next time, we can't wait to see what you create. Bye. Bye.